thank you very much for the presentation. And, um, so my talk will be about uh, functional oxide interfaces. So of course, uh, I would like, uh, before the formal presentation, I also thank the department accept my application, and I also like thank the community to be here. So <coughs> interface is a contact. So when we put uh, two metals together, you get a contact. That's an interface. And I'm talking about today is when you put two ceramics together, you get an interface which will behave like a metal, which can be used very useful in electronic devices. So <coughs> I will show you a short background of this research and also an introduction to the oxide electronics. Later on, I will show you our understanding and material development in this field, also the technique the band structure uh, uh, technique applied at oxide interface. Uh, hopefully, I will also show you some applications, possible applications and uh, perspective in this field. So we know our computers and smartphones become faster, cheaper, and smarter. And this is because our transistors, this transistor is the built-in block of the electronic device. It become from the original one become smaller and smaller. Follow the uh, trend called Moore's law. Bas basically, it shrink by half every year. So, but follow this trend at around 2020. This device cannot be smaller anymore because when the device below about five nanometer, quantum effect will play a role. Basically, you make a computer, it's not functioning as you wanted. And on the other hand, when the device becomes smaller and smaller, the heat problem becomes very critical. Basically, a lot of energy is lost by the, uh, the heat. And from the history, now we are using CMOS transistor. This transistor is re replaced, the former transistor is just because it produces less heat. And now we are at a ridge. The heat is also heating up now. So we are at a ridge to, to want a new generation of electronic devices. Of course, this heat problem is more serious when we talk about uh, <coughs> supercomputers or high performance com computers. Like the, the, the Facebook European data center, you have to put it in Arctic Circle. That's because you want to uh, <coughs> uh, cool. And also, uh, you still need a lot of chillers to cooling the system. And uh, uh, the cost, if, in fact, if, you, if we only save 10% of the energy of computers, you still can save about 1 billion US dollars each year. That's a big amount. So because of these two problems, so in the international semiconductor uh, community, they realized already at 2007, so they think we have to develop a new generation of device based on new physical pr uh, principles. And most of the funding you can, you can find they published last year in this book. But today I'm talking about oxide interfaces, which is another option. So I will show you <coughs> Why it's oxide? So we, we know silicon is the basis material of oxide electronics. So while we, the oxides, we, we use this strontium titanate as the basis material of oxide electronics. And uh, for people who don't know this material, in fact, this material in 50 years ago, it's used as fifth diamond. So this material is uh, quite common, relatively common, in fact. So this material, when it becomes conductive, it produces much better physics than sili silicon because this, uh, the, con the conduction comes from electrons. The electrons in this material are coupled. So because they, 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 you can think like, uh, like a people hand by hand. So if you, if you want to uh, remove one person, you will influence others. But this not happens in silicon. You remove one, 
and others keep the same. Also, the orbitals in oxides is much fancier than in uh, orbitals. So as a result, in oxides, you get a lot of useful functions, such as superconductivity and uh, magnetism and ferroelectricity. This is all found in our functional device. On the other hand, silicon, you can only have conduction or not conduction. So, uh, and uh, one important for oxides, because the strontium titanate is a provost cut structure, this structure can also fit to other functional oxides. So in principle, you can think about everything in oxides. Basically, if we think we want to make a burger, in semiconductors, you can only make a simple say, burger. But in oxides, you can make as fancy as you want. So, so uh, and also, we thanks to the recent, recent technology uh, process. So now we can grow oxide his super lenses as good as the semiconductors. So therefore, now it's an age we can think about build up our own super lenses. So there are more than around 2,300 provascular oxides with almost every function. So basically you can grow every, every device you want. When we think about it, you, uh, build a device, we, of course we want to build the most simple and most useful device. And if we look at the semi semiconductor technology, the most uh, the transistor, the, base, uh, the building block of the electronic device is based on a conducting interface. It's called a two-dimensional electron gas. And this, uh, this, sim this simple interface and uh, is used to build the computers and the smartphones. But this is surprising, is also found in 2004 at oxide interface in a bare lamp. So when uh, Howard Huang and uh, uh, his college put lanthium aluminum on strontium titanate, they, at the interface, they found a con uh, conducting, metallic conducting. And this a uh, big surprise to the community because this material is also transparent and it gives also a new opportunity for electronics because basically it's like the semiconductors, the conducting interface. So you can build a computer based on oxides now. Uh, and, uh, since 2004, a lot of efforts have been put to this system and a lot of useful and interesting physical properties and phenomena are found at this interface. And now people also, in Germany, they also built a field effect transistor based on this oxide interface. And uh, researchers also can integrate this interface with silicon. So everything seems promising, but there is a key problem for this interface. So the, the, the interface quality or, or the cleanness of the interface is quite poor. Basically, when we talk about, we use this conducting interface, we want the electrons to move very fast at the interface. We call it, it as a mobility. We want the mobility to be high enough to be useful. So in silicon, we have to increase the, the mobility from a few thousand to around 30 million nowadays. But in oxides, in the, most, in the first 10 years or 80 years, the mobility didn't increase to more than bulk materials. So this basically is quite difficult to use it for it. And I think we are among the few groups in the world can make the mobility higher than the bulk mobility. And uh, in treating is in 2015, we found a technique called modulation doping, which can apply at this interface also. And uh, basically this technique is the technique which improves the semiconductor a lot uh, in uh, 1980s. So hopefully we will get more progress in the, in the field. So basically in our DTU contribution will be like this. We starting from the understanding why the interface become conducting and then we built up three very uh, nice system which uh, well, we, each system has its own, own um, competence, I would say. And then we think about, we, 
we develop a universal pr principle called modulation doping to this field, and this open uh, a new opportunity to research quantum device and quantum transport at oxide interface. And it can be also used for uh, energy. I would see uh, some concerns about to build transparent solar cells and also artificial catalysts. So before I go to the results, I'll show you how, how to we do this. So to atomically control of the interface, you need uh, two things. First, uh, you need to uh, atomically flat substrate. So the, uh, the plate where you put your materials on. So we can control the substrate as flat as one unit cell. Uh, so 0 0.5, 0 0.4 nanometer scale. And we use a technique called pulsed laser deposition. And this is compared to the semiconductor technology, this is a relatively simple uh, technique because you use a laser to heat into the one kilo chamber on the target, and there will be a plume. This plume is the material you want to grow, and it will, it will deposit it on the substrate. And uh, at the same time, we can also institute, we monitor the film growth, use a read. Basically, you use an electron gun to differ electrons go to the substrate and it differ differencing. By monitoring the differencing, we can control the film growth uh, layer by layer. Uh, when read of the leakage uh, corresponding to, to the growth of one neutral layer of oxide. So basically with this technique, we can grow, grow uh, any oxides, almost any oxides to design to our uh, to use as a fun functional uh, interfaces, and we back to the uh, conducting at LAO STO interface. So there are ten years discussing about why the interface is conducting. So the uh, the original explanation is think about is about intrinsic doping. Basically, so this material lithium aluminum is a polar. So when you grew a polar material on strontium titanium, which is a nonpolar. So there will be a potential built up at the, the, the interface. So when this, this potential will lift the uh, one inch band of LAO to, to above the condensing band of STO, so the electrons will transfer from here. But this need a voltage as high as 3.2 EV. It's like a three 32,000 degree. So people uh, criticize this too high. Before these electrons can transfer, maybe there is already defects forms at the interface, like oxygen vancations, like lanthium uh, intermixing. So this all can give the conduction. So I think uh, because all these structures are made at high temperatures before, at high temperatures, so the uh, strontium titanium also gives out oxygen to the film or to the environment. So basically, uh, we, we, we think we, don't, we cannot make agreement in the field if we always grow the films at high temperatures. So we, therefore, we choose room temperature deposition. So room temperature deposition is quite simple. So you put the sample into the chamber and you deposit and it forms. The important thing is it rule out all the possibilities discussed before. So that when you grow at room temperature, it's amorphous. So you get you have no polarity of the film. You have no thermal introduced oxygen condensing. You uh, you have no intermixing. But we still found the interface is conducting. So that's very interesting. And uh, we uh, later on we. Do a lot of work on this, and we found the conducting of this amorphous uh, structure is as good as the creatine ones. So it's a metallic conducting, it's silver conducting, it can also be controlled by a uh, gate. So uh, it's also transparent. So basically everything is goes well, and uh, most surprising for us, if we summarize all the lectures reported on oxide interface, and we found all the conducting interface which uh, reported is uh, the element uh, still fits the redox reaction region. And of, often 
if we if you use the element which don't fits in the redox reduction region, the interface is insulating. And so far, we didn't find another system which don't fit in our model. So this provides a very powerful uh, tool to design or conducting oxide interfaces. So based on this, we think we need to think, uh, rethink about LAOS2. So people use this lithium aluminum, but it fits uh, aluminum-based oxide. But if you look into all the aluminum-based oxide, lithium aluminum for sure is not the best uh, match material with S2. Because therefore, we think uh, on the other hand, we found gamma aluminum, which is a very common material in the world. And uh, it can be better fit than this, the people use uh, lithium aluminum oxide. So we will try to grow this gamma aluminum on S2. Gamma aluminum is a structure of spinal structure. But if you carefully look about the structure and the chemistry, you will find it can also epitize growth on S2. Uh, and uh, we set to this, and we can grow very high quality interface, and the interface is uh, conducting. And uh, it gives very high mobility, uh, around uh, 100,000. So far, it's the best uh, material uh, in the field, I think. And we also did a lot of low term quantum transport in this interface, and everything seems better than LAOS2, at, at least uh, 10 times higher than the mobility. And we also determine the conduction uh, layer of thickness is around only one nanometer. Basically, it's two unit cell. And uh, basically, this material, I think, is have a lot of advantages because uh, better lattice match, clear 2D character, and high mobility, also important, it's cheap and a common material. Alumina you can find everywhere. And it's also, we found, it can also grow, grow at room temperature. So recently, there is also people uh, discuss, highlight that uh, mismatched lattice maybe give a lot of new opportunities to oxide interfaces. So besides this, we also think about, because uh, people want use Focus mainly on LAOS2, but uh, if we look beyond all this, can we use the principles in semiconductors to uh, apply it to oxide interface to create some new ones? So one technique is called uh, piezoelectronic polarization introduced to the electric gas. This has been used in semiconductors and also in simple oxide interface, but never f f used in complex oxide interfaces. So and we realize there is possibility to do this, to introduce the pure electric polarization. So we, uh, people report our strontium zirconate on S2. There is a possibility. But we think uh, strontium zirconate, uh, the lattice mismatch is a little bigger. So we use uh, gallium zirconate, and uh, it turns out uh, very nice epitaxial growth. And uh, also, you, you can f f see some slightly distortion near the interface, which could account uh, very high mobility electron gas. So we, uh, we also try to fit the the model used in some characters, it seems works good. So in principle, we can work more C terms, and uh, there could be more. But we are thinking about after discovering these so many uh, good C terms, can we further increase, uh, further clean up the interview, or further increase the electromobility? So uh, then we need to think about the most useful technique used in semiconductors is called a modulation doping. This technique has increased the mobility from few thousand to 30 million. And it also realized the high mobility field effect transistor, which is used now in the smartphones. And also it has lead to the discovery of the Frank Sino quantum core effect, which received a Nobel Prize. So basically, this technique is very useful technique in semiconductor. But people, when you, they use this technique in oxide interface, so far, nobody succeeded. So until 2014, nobody succeeded. Because they didn't get any increase in mobility. Why is that? 
we think, of course, uh, in this period, we can understand more about oxidative interface. For semiconductor interface, the electrons here, the modulation doping is uh, you putting an uh, undoped space layer to separate electrons uh, with the ionic donors to suppress the scanning. So you basically, you like if the cars as electrons, so you, 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 you put this spacer is like you put the cars on the highway, like the fence. So if you put cars on the highway, they move very fast. So this module is doping. But in oxides, electrons are coupled. So basically, you, you not only have cars, you also have heavily trucks. So when your cars move together with the trucks, you will not move fast. So what we do, we do is we try to think about a way to only stop the trucks on the, its own way and more, uh, let the cars move its own way. So in principle, it's possible. So in some, basically in semiconductors, you only use a space layer to separate the electrons and the donors. But in, if we put an empty subband at the spacer, so this empty subband could be trapped most of the electrons before they form the 2D electron gas, and then it may be work. So we check the lecture, in fact, there are a lot of oxides could be used for, for, this, uh, for this technique. So most of the uh, progress card report here is useful. And uh, we tried one of lanthium magnet, and it works. You, you only put one unit cell, that's 0.4 nanometer, as the interface, and you can increase the mobility at least 20 times. And the best one, you can increase 100 times. Of course, we also pro, uh, use a lot of advanced technique to prove what our thinking is correct. So because when you put this layer, the layer become very uh, clean. Uh, and also, you can also see the layer is only, conf the, the space layer is only confined at the interface. The quality is quite good, I think. And also, we use the beam line to determine where the electrons go, where the electrons are. And then we can find all the electrons uh, the, it go to the space layer. So the, it's from minus 3 go to minus 2. Minus 3 to go to the other. So, so everything fits. Basically, when you, before you put in the, uh, before your formation of the electron gas, you have empty line band. But after you form the 2D electric gas, the first field is the EG band of magnets. So every phase is what we want. So this technique, basically this is the first time we realize modulation doping at oxide E phase. And uh, it's, well, now we apply this technique to other interfaces. It works also good. The important thing is this is the first time we get a clean interface. So this, now we have the opportunity to research quantum transport. So we, can, we have succeeded in observing the quantum Hall effect at, at the interface, and uh, we discovered uh, now is this interface is indeed different from semiconductor interface because this is a multiple quantum well neutral. And uh, there is, uh, of course, this starts a studying for most uh, transport. I think if I, I want to see something possible possibility, then I think that this quantum phenomena and quantum device will be most useful now. It's time to research this because we have the high quality oxide interface now. So is this a big community in semiconductors? Previously, all these quantum devices only, are only based on semiconductor interfaces. And now you can also use this oxide interface to build quantum devices. And in fact, this is an example of our PhD student, he make a quantum ring, and uh, the result is also uh, promising. So maybe in future, and now people are using semiconductors to build quantum computers. Maybe in near future, we can also use oxide interface to build uh, quantum computers. Another thing is uh, silicon, we know. Silicon is not only used in computers, it's also used in solar cell. So it's one of the best uh, solar cells so far. So can we use uh, oxides to build solar cells? It seems possible. And importantly, we can use uh, 
we even can build a fully transparent solar cell in future. So basically, you have to put your solar cell now on the roof. If you make a transparent solar cell, every window can be covered, will be power, you give electricity. And uh, in fact, uh, I checked in the world, there are only two groups in, uh, in USA, they are working on this. So hopefully, we will be the first one in Europe to work on this. So uh, another thing is that it's possible, possible because our department is working on a lot on the fuel cell. So uh, you, you can use a uh, solid oxide heterostructure to transfer, uh, to use gas to electric, electric, electricity. So far, the most problem comes from the cancelled because the catalytic property is quite poor for this uh, cancelled. And recently, people think this uh, ORR activity may be related to the feeding of the EG electrons. But uh, normally, people they get this material by doping. But doping is quite limited. So if we can, by understanding the electronic structure of different oxides, we can use putting two materials together, use the charge transfer such as from EG2 and EG0, you transfer one to here, we get uh, electrons uh, which will be good for the cancelled. The, the difference is we don't intru introduce any doping, so you don't introduce any defect. So every material is quite poor, but you can still get as high as, uh, as possible. So basically, I think there are a lot of other possibilities for oxide interface, but I'm I'm stopped here. So I would, um, I think we have done, uh, we make our own contribution to the field. And uh, I would also, this nice work is thanks, to, I would appreciate it a lot to the uh, colleges in DTU Energy, especially uh, our colleges such as Professor Nini Pritis and uh, Professor Sorin Linderers and our PhD students. Also, our technicians in the DTU Energy, it helps a lot. And uh, the TM is uh, done by DTU Singh, and Takashi is uh, also an expert. And also, transport uh, is uh, done, collaborate with the uh, University of Copenhagen, Thomas Lipid, and other uh, Thomas. And also, we get a lot of support from uh, international, such as uh, ne from Netherlands, from Canada, China, and uh, Italy. So I uh, appreciate a lot to the contribute. Also, thank you very much for your presentation.